You can do that? Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video I want to show you a fun and dramatic way that you can change your painting so that it's different from the reference photo. And I'll share with you the upside down technique that I used to make this change. This image was free on Unsplash. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to try this painting for yourself. So if you look at the photo you can see the water behind the girl is all a solid color, this turquoise blue. It's a beautiful color. I could have easily just done a solid flat wash for the pool water, but in my opinion this would have been rather uninteresting and so as I was planning for this painting I was imagining some watery shapes around her and a variety of values that move upward mirroring the shape of her hair floating to the water surface to paint the water I knew I'd need to avoid painting over the skin on the girl's arms and face I could have painted the water from top to bottom and let the movement of the paint and the water flow downward by tilting the board upright but then it would run into trouble with the paint potentially washing over her skin unless I masked it with tape or masking fluid first the other issue with going top to bottom is that if you started at the top, your paint would be a little bit darker, which is the opposite of what I was envisioning. I wanted the top of the painting to be lighter, just to suggest the sunlight above the surface of the water. So here's where painting upside down comes to the rescue. I completely flipped my board upside down, holding it at a slightly upright angle to encourage the paint and the water to flow downward. Because the girl's head was a natural separator in the painting, I was able to work in two sections, starting with the left side. Using my size 12 round brush, I pre-wet the paper with a generous amount of water, allowing the brush to miss a couple of vertical little slivers, and using an up and down motion of the brush. Then I loaded my brush with a juicy amount of Holbein turquoise blue, which I thought was the perfect color for this water and painted carefully around the arm and the face. Once I had done this little bit of edge work, I was able to work more freely and quickly, adding in water, tilting the board, and encouraging this ethereal, watery look in the paint. I used this same technique for the right-hand side of the painting, starting with loads of water, just allowing it to drip all the way down. This is, in effect, creating tracks for the paint to follow. Wherever the water goes, the paint will flow. Working fast, I loaded up my brush with paint and used that same squiggly downward motion of the brush to apply the paint in a loose and fluid manner. Where it pooled a little at the bottom, I just gently lifted that out with a thirsty brush. So there's the finished painting side by side with the photo. I hope this video will be a good reminder that you don't have to be a slavish copyist of your reference photo. As artists, we get to change things to fit our vision. You don't need my permission or anyone else's to paint the way that you want, but sometimes we need little reminders not to impose limitations on ourselves. I know I do. If you want to paint along with me, the real-time version of this painting is available as a fully narrated course through my Watercolor Mastery membership. With your membership, you'll have access to this and over 100 20 full-length instructional videos which cover a wide range of subjects like portraits, wildlife, landscapes, and pets. All videos come with a reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used for each project. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. Thanks for watching today. Oh, and be sure to download my free watercolor jumpstart guide if you want to learn more about fun techniques including drips with watercolor. The link is in the description below. I'll see you in the next video.